So Scareclaw is a deck that actually took my interest recently, so I decided to kind of learn it, play it, and test it online. And I'm going to be honest with you, I think this deck is so powerful, and it's very underrated because a lot of people don't actually know how to play around this deck and how to actually break this deck's boards, and that's why I think this deck can be competitive in today's format. So with that being said, I've explored Scareclaw, and I think I've put together a list that can be super competitive in today's format. With that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. So first things first, we are starting off with three Scareclaw Acro, three Scareclaw Astra, as well as three Scareclaw Balone. The nice thing is with any normal summon of these, you can make all of your combos start because you go into Lightheart right away. But they're all also extenders for you because if you control a Scareclaw monster, you can special summon the card adjacent to that Scareclaw monster and or to a zone that it points to, right? So it's really powerful because this is an extender for you. So of course, three, 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 you want to be maxing out on these ones. And on top of that, these cards do some really powerful things. They actually help you otk which is actually really nice going into turn three pushing for games actually not very hard and so how they do that is acro for example gives a scareclaw monster in the extra monster zone 300 attack for each defense position monster you control so if you control two it's giving it 600 attack now you guys might be wondering okay a 600 attack boost what is that going to do well you have astra and balone here which are also going to help you otk so what astra does is that same monster in the extra monster zone it can attack a number of times each battle phase up to the number of defense position scareclaw monsters you control with different names so if you control one, two, three, let's say in defense position, it can attack three times, which is really powerful, right? So that's why this is going to help you OTK as well, because it's going to give your tryhard a lot of attacks. But on top of that, Balone has a really powerful effect where it's going to give your Scareclaw monster in the extra monster zone piercing damage when you, they attack a defense position monster, right? So this is going to give you piercing damage. It's going to give you an ability to attack multiple times, and this is going to give you an attack boost. So that's kind of how you're going to be able to OTK. And of course, opening multiple of these means you're going to be able to combo as well. So they are combo pieces, but they're also OTK pieces, which is really powerful. Then we are playing three Scareclaw Reichardt. Reichardt is really powerful because first of all it has the same effect where you can kind of special summon itself to a scareclaw zone or adjacent to a scareclaw monster so that's really powerful when it's special summoned you can search a scareclaw spell or trap from your deck to your hand and if you control three or more scareclaw monsters in defense position you can actually get an extra draw which in this deck actually does come up right because you're playing all these cards so you get the extra draw you get the search and you get the special summon all with one card over here so raycar i think is a very important three of in the deck it's also another scareclaw name which is really powerful and then we're playing one visa starfrost so visa starfrost is a card that you can search in a lot of your combos and you only want to play the one because it gives you access to something like Baron, but it also gives you a really cool combo piece with your light heart. So I kind of want to talk about this just a little bit because I think this is something that uh, can actually help you if you're actually trying to play Scareclaw. So pretty much with Vizas, you can activate its effect where you can target a card you control with a different type and attribute, destroy it, and then special summon the Vizas, right? And why does that work with Lightheart? So Lightheart is a Dark Beast Warrior. This is a Light Warrior. So obviously you can pop your Lightheart to special summon the Vizas. But what's really nice here is that the Scareclaw Lightheart effect is not a hard once per turn. The effect to search i should say what's really powerful is if you go light heart activate effect let's say your opponent ashes it or negates the effect whatever it is you can activate your visa star frost pop the light heart that's on the field summon the visa then because you control a visa you can use the light heart graveyard effect special summon it back now all this card needs to be summoned is another scareclaw monster and the first effect where if it's link summoned it's not a hard ones per turn so you can use the light heart that you just summoned back to make a second light heart and then you're going to be able to use its effect again where if it's link summoned you can add a rake phobia from your deck to your hand so that's why i think lightheart with the visa starfrost combo is really powerful because it kind of helps you play around certain hand traps right in that sense so the one visa is very powerful then we're playing two scareclaw kashtara this card is really powerful first of all because we're also playing three fenrir this card is really powerful first of all because we're playing three fenrir as well so i just kind of want to talk about that we're playing three fenrir so you can always search the scareclaw kashtara it's also another scareclaw name which is really nice because it works really well with all of these scareclaw monsters over here on top of that it has 2600 defense and it can attack while it's in defense position so that also helps because that also helps you push for damage and then lastly it has an effect where the effects of an opponent's monster that was involved with battle with a kashtara or scareclaw monster that you control while this face-up card is on the field are negated and why is that really powerful if you attack over a monster for example that floats when it's destroyed by battle or card effect right you attack over that monster well at the end of the day it was involved in a battle which means the effects are negated so it's kind of really nice because it kind of has that negation for you and it kind of makes it so that you can attack freely without having to worry about monsters floating about monsters activating their effects etc etc as long as it's in 
involved in battle with a Scareclaw or Kashtura monster, essentially this card is going to be negating a lot of those. So Scareclaw Kashtura in this deck specifically is really powerful. And of course, like I said, three Fenrir. Fenrir is able to search this card, unlike in other decks where you're just playing Fenrir to search another Fenrir because it's a good card. Of course, Fenrir on its own is a good card, but being able to have a Fenrir on your side of the field as another form of disruption, as well as searching you a Scareclaw name is really powerful. So that's it for the Scareclaw slash Kashtura engine and, and the main engine of the deck. I should say that's it just for the monsters. There's going to be spells and traps as well, but that's it for the monsters. Moving on to the hand traps, we are playing three Ash Blossom, three DD Crow, as well as three Imperm. These are just the best nine hand traps in my opinion right now in today's format. Nibiru is okay, but I actually like these nine the best. I think DD Crow is really good into Unchained purely. It's good into Centurion, Tier Limit, etc, etc. It's just so good into so many decks that I think DD Crow is really important in today's format. And then Imperm and Ash are really generic and really powerful. Imperm is also really good because it's a board breaker. Not only is it a hand trap, it's a board breaker. And if you're going first, you can set it, which is really powerful. Then we're playing the one reinforcements of the army, of course. And then we're only playing two Rake Phobia. The reason we're playing two is because you can search it with your Light Heart a lot of the time. You don't actually want to play three because having multiple in your hand doesn't really do anything for you. So I think two is actually the perfect number because you're always going to be able to get to it. As long as you open any single one of these names, you're going to have access to Rake Phobia because you have access to Light Heart and Light Heart is going to get you to Rake Phobia, right? So that's why I think playing two Rake Phobia is perfectly fine. Another card that we're playing two of is two Scareclaw Arrival. Now I'm playing two Arrival, not just one. I think the second one is really powerful in the mid to late game. On top of that, it's a searchable card, which is really nice, but it also has another effect in the graveyard that's really powerful, where essentially if a Scareclaw link monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this instead to protect that monster. So it's a protection for you, right? So two arrival, I think is really good as a monster reborn, but also as a protection piece. One Scareclaw Straddle. Straddle is really good because it has two effects. The first one being you can target a Scareclaw monster or a Visa Starfrost in your monster zone, and then target one face up monster your opponent controls, and then your monster gains attack and defense equal to your opponent's monster. Again, that helps you OTK. But the really powerful effect is the second one, in my opinion, whereas when a card or effect is activated that targets a Scareclaw or Visa Starfrost you control, you can negate that effect. So it's really powerful because it's a protection piece for you. And I think that is really valuable in a deck like this one, where you need as many bodies on the field as possible. Having that added layer of protection and being able to negate a card that would otherwise destroy or negate your monsters is really powerful. We're also playing the one Scareclaw Defang. This card is really powerful because it does two things for you. The main two things that it does is that your opponent cannot target Scareclaw monsters or Visa Starfrost you control. And then on top of that, your cards cannot be destroyed by card effects. So this card is going to be protecting it from your card effects. A lot of the time, if you have a try hard, your opponent's monsters are going to go to the defense position, which means they can't really battle over your cards anyways, but it only protects your link monsters, right? This is going to protect your main monsters as well. This only protects your link monsters and then arrival, you have that protection as well. So you guys can see this deck has so much built in protection, which I think is really, really powerful. And then not only does it have all that defensive capabilities, it has a lot of offensive capabilities as well, where one, if you attack into a monster, your opponent controls with a scare call or a cash monster, it's going to banish that monster. So one, you're banishing your opponent's monsters rather than going to the graveyard. And two, the other thing it does is you can banish a scare call link monster from your field or your graveyard. So any extra light hearts, for example, and then you can destroy a card your opponent controls. So you're going to destroy cards, you're going to be banishing cards, and you're going to be protecting your own cards. This card is absolutely insane. The only reason we're playing one is because of course it's searchable. One call by the grave is really powerful as well, just to protect you from hand traps. Three triple tactics talents. Again, really just very important in today's format. It's kind of like a format tax card. One of the scare claw slash as well as one scare claw twin saw. I wouldn't recommend playing more than one of each. I think playing one of each is perfectly fine. Again, all searchable cards, which is really nice. So 40 cards in the main deck, super consistent in the main deck here, which is really, really powerful. And then moving on to the extra deck over here, we are playing three light heart as well as three try heart. These are the most important cards that you need in your deck. You need to be playing three and three. Try heart is essentially the card that you're always going to want to end on. You're going to want to make this your boss monster of the deck. If you have a try heart with a couple names, with your defang on board, maybe a rival in the graveyard, it becomes super powerful. So you really want to have your try heart as your quote unquote towers of the deck. It's not a towers on its own, but it becomes the towers with all of these extra cards here as well. And it becomes an OTK machine for you as well, right? So three and three, very, very important to play. One Link Spider, of course. Link Spider is for when you kind of get hit with Nibiru. The reason for that is because if you get hit with Nibiru and, uh, you know, you have a token on your side of the field, Tryheart needs effect monsters. So you can use the Nibiru token into a Link Spider, it becomes an effect monster. And then you can kind of try to continue from there and use the Link Spider to become a Tryheart, right? Something that doesn't come up too often, but when it does, it's really powerful. One Asa, Asa is really good. I mean, these are all Earth, so it's a generic monster you can make. It's also good to take opponent's Fenrir's if that comes up. So it's not something that happens super often, but when it does, it's really powerful. One IP Mascarena, one SP Little Knight, and one Unicorn. The reason I'm playing Unicorn actually, as well as the SP Little Knight, most of the time you're going to be going into SP, but what Unicorn lets you do is it lets you go into access code without having to use your try heart. So sometimes IP into Unicorn is actually a little bit better because then you can go into access code, which is really nice, right? So you can have access code plus try heart, and that's going to be a game for you anyways. And then we're 
we're playing the one Baron, the floor Baron, of course, is really powerful with your Visa Starfrost. If you use Visa Starfrost plus any four, essentially, you can make a Baron the floor here as well. So that's really powerful. You can also make it with uh, Ash and Fenrir. That doesn't happen as much, but the Visa plus a four it happens more often. We're playing the one Vicious Astrolab, just another body. The reason you're able to make this is because you're playing Visa Starfrost as well as the right card. So you're able to make a Vicious Astrolab, just an extender for you, just to get an extra body. So that's really powerful. And then we're playing the one Typhon. Typhon is a card that I think is, again, plan like C. It, worst case scenario, you need to make a Typhon. But another card that I actually suggest playing in this that you could play is Cross Sheep, because Cross Sheep does work pretty well with Vicious Astrolab. You can play Appaloosa as well. So just another option. This 15th slot is kind of really up to you. So Typhon, Appaloosa, Cross Sheep, all really powerful options, right? So that's it for the extra deck. And then moving on to the side deck here. Again, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference, but these are the cards that I personally suggest. So play three Gamma Seal. I think Gamma Seal is really good into the purely matchup, into a lot of matchups as well. So Gamma Seal just being able to out any cards that you don't want to otherwise deal with makes it really easy. Three Dark Ruler No More. You're not necessarily OTKing every single time with this deck. I mean, you can. However, Dark Ruler No More just helps you break those kind of boards that you don't want to deal with. And then even if you're not OTKing, you're going to be able then to set up your own board, which a lot of the time your opponent won't be able to break. Once you out their board, even if you're not OTKing them, you're going to be able to set up your own board, right? One Heartbeat and two Lightning Storm. This is really important, of course, for back row matchups. Also good for back row matchups. The three Evenly Match is also really good into Rescue Ace and whatnot as well. And then lastly, when you are going first, let's say into games two and game three against certain matchups, something like Centurion, something like pendulum etc etc d barrier is just kind of like an auto win card so i really like playing 3d barrier and that's it for the deck here guys honestly it's a deck that i know a lot of people have been asking for and i really wanted to show it off i've been testing with it i'm kind of newer to the deck but i think this list here is super consistent super powerful and it's actually a really fun deck if your opponents don't know how to play around these cards you're gonna win a lot of games that way so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my build of Scareclaw for the December 2023 format. I think this deck is super underrated. It's one of those decks that does a lot of different things really well. And if your opponent is not prepared for it, I think you could be very successful with this deck. Honestly, even if your opponent is prepared for it, this deck is pretty powerful. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We are uploading every single day in the month of December. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all that. The goal is 16,000. We're so close. I know we can make it happen. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spinko signing out. Peace.